What's going on, everybody? Welcome to Point Fighter Live. I'm Alex Reyes, and we're here tonight with Alex Digman as the co-host. How's everything today, sir? Everything's great. We're loving it. It's a rare time that I'm able to be here at this time, but this is going to be a great show. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We, we're going to have an awesome show today. And um, I also want to say, before we start the show, I want to say, um, you know, I hope he's resting you know, in heaven right now, very good. Happy celebrating Gerald Dawson. Uh, happy birthday to you. And, um, you know, I know that you're proud of, uh, of our team and everybody. And just, uh, you know, I hope we're making you proud and just happy birthday. And shout out to Gerald, you know. And um, Absolutely. Yes. Yeah, Gerald's such a great guy. And yeah. I, I, he and I never got a chance to fight with each other in competition. But I've just always had a lot of respect for him. And I'll probably ask the guys on the show tonight, like what yeah. was so what's a way where Gerald's really impacted your life? My, my, he and my wife actually got a chance to talk a little bit one time, mainly just because he thought she was Stephanie Flowers. So <laughs> then he asked that after like I don't know a minute and a half of them talking, she had to say, "I'm not Stephanie." Oh my god, that's <laughs> well, yeah, but yeah, but then they yeah, so they had a chance to have. Great wow. conversation or two. So yeah, yeah, man. You know, he was always one of these guys that like they give you advice. You know, great. Like I, I got just a little, just you know, I wasn't around him a whole lot, but but from from I was around him like from the nineties till you know till like till he passed away and like he you know he gave me advice that I still use right. today and like he was very influential and very good. So um, you know. Yeah, we miss you, Gerald, and I hope we're making you proud. Um, all right, so let's start out with the show. You know, Point Fighter approved uh, event. We had three last weekend tournament of champions, which was Marty Eubanks event. Uh, great event. You know, uh, the team, my team did very well there. And, yeah, uh, they did. They did very well. They've had a great year so far, right? So what do you think about what do you think about the, the year they started, how we started out with the so, stuff? It would, the merger was cool, yeah. Um, and it, it, it's a great concept. It's a good thing. You got two teams that are really kind of fighting to be a, a big team and just put resources together. It makes a lot of sense. Um, yeah. But yeah. if you would have told me, okay, the power team's going to win the or the AK Warrior Cup, or that uh, TD yeah. is going to win the <laughs> Warrior Cup, like I would say, okay, that's possible because WKF had won the Warrior Cup team yeah. championships before yeah but not the dominance from the start of the year to now yeah i mean i'll be honest i wouldn't have guessed it. i think I it's thought. better than i even thought it was gonna be you know because exactly. they're like like just um they're just like they're competing everywhere too they're not just competing you know ak was the first team event but they've been competing almost every weekend and katana i mean everybody's just caught yeah fire, right yeah so um, that's really yeah. been a great one. It's Katana because Katana yeah. winning the diamonds the yeah. years, years back, I thought, okay, now she's going to come out strong and she didn't, she kind of, she kind of had a little bit of a hangover, but now she's really started to turn it on. Yeah. Now she started to come in to the, to the stage where everybody thought she was going to be Yeah, but just from is. top to bottom. T the power of TDE has been great. Even yeah. from guys like Devin Hopper and Zach, Zach, Winder. I mean, they're, they're, they're hot. Yeah. Everybody's great. Yeah, man. And it's crazy. Like it's not something that just came together overnight too. Like I see it as something that started back in 2013 when I got Josh to be on my team. Yeah. And that's when the whole relationship started and, um, you know, and just, it turned into this, this is the outcome and, um, it's awesome. But, uh, but yeah, we're going to talk more about that too. Uh, royalty promotions, mini queen. She does a great job. With, with uh, awards, you guys are looking for great awards. We got some great companies that support Point Fighter. That's some of the awards she, um, that's some of the awards there. She does a great job. We're gonna be talking about this event uh, coming up soon. This is the, the post show for the Tournament of Champions Sport Karate Discussion. Shout out to Doris Brothers as well. Been around a long time. ASG, yeah, have. shout out to ASG, a sponsor of the, since from the beginning, since I came out. Actually, he's the reason why I have Point Fighter. And came back. So shout out to Jason Chen. Support him and his gear and uniforms. And uh, just a great guy. 
And another company that gives back is Top 10. Um, you know, we're, we're, I'm proud to be working with them too and Fighters Inc. And it's not just a gear. They also have stuff for your, for your, um, for your school as well. You know, so if you're looking for like um, mats, anything, they actually got a great uh, promo now with the mats. Like if you have a school, if you're a schooner, you get like a 50% off on the mats right now. So that's a great deal. But um, yeah, Ace, a, a few up and coming events that we're just going to talk about real quick. Uh, Champions Challenge, that's in Michigan. We did the pre-show today. It's a great event. Um, that's in Michigan. That's next weekend. Then the following weekend, the Inner uh, Mountain Karate Challenge, that's in Salt Lake, uh, that's Farmington, Utah. Uh, Jack Felton's doing a seminar there, and then yeah, that, that same, that's uh, the 29th and 30th, and then that same weekend, the Blitz Tampa event, which uh, Blitz is, you know, like a national, it's like a mini national uh, league. It's like almost like a national league. When you go there, it's almost yeah. like a national tournament. Um so yeah, man. Hey, so before we bring on these guys, we're gonna bring on, um, we're gonna bring on uh, Tomas Baez. We're gonna bring on Zane, and we're gonna bring on um, Jim Haymore. Now, they won the tournament. They won all their. They won the division. Zane won the open weight and the overall. Uh, he he pretty they we pretty much swept the event. So you're gonna interview them each, but they all have kind of some a good story behind them. You know, like Zane just moved out here. Uh, from Mexico, uh, Jim came back with an injury, and Tomas too. He's like a uh, he's been around. He was around like in the early two thousands, and then just came back now. He's a dojo school owner, and uh, so there's a there's a that's a good interview there. I was gonna interview them yesterday, and I was like, man, it's almost gonna feel like a team meeting. So then, uh, you know, then we were having technical difficulties, so we just uh, waited till today, and then I thought about you automatically to interview them so uh thanks for joining us on the show you always do a good job now before we bring them on is there any subject uh you want to talk about um so is there any yeah that you, want you know to talk i was about thinking first? about this i was thinking about this alex so at the tournament of champions marty gave away the gold watch right yeah that was like the bluegrass watch yeah exactly and there was certain awards like that that were really iconic the bluegrass gold watch and, and uh, obviously, there's the diamond. There's the Warrior Cup. Yeah. And I believe the Compete had the medallion. And just, yeah. to, what, just, just to be able to have that type of you know, iconic award, like, I got this. You know, yeah, you, you better get the cash I prize because you have to. how important that watch was from before. You know, I wonder if he knows the history of that watch. And like, right. that was one of the few – because back then it was lightweight grand, middleweight grand, and heavyweight grand. But he was one of the few tournaments that gave away the overall grant and gave out that watch, right? Exactly. At the Blue right. Nationals and kind of like, so that's really a prestigious watch right there. To exactly. Have. Yeah. And at the time, I don't remember it back too far in the early 90s and the 80s. I don't remember that personally. But I think there was just a few of tournaments that were doing that. There was the Bluegrass that was doing that. Compete the Diamonds at, obviously at the did the Diamond. I think. Cause I yeah. 97, I fought and I won the lightweight grand. It was my rookie tournament. I thought I was done, right? I just won the lightweight grand. And I was like, it was my first tournament as an adult. And I'm like, yeah. And then I, I had a huge headache. And then they were like, I had beaten Donald Brady. And then I thought I was done. Yeah, mm -hmm. rookie tournament. I know, I thought it was easier. Then it got harder. <laughs> the next tournament, he whooped my butt. But, um, but uh, then I had to fight... Um, Man, the guy from Trade Wins, what was his name? Um, that he it was Donald Brady. I Man, I can't believe I forgot his name, but he was from uh, Boston Taekwondo, you know, and I lost to him, and yeah. then he ended up losing to Mike Palmero for the Mike Palmero won that. But that was cool that they have like diamonds, aka like you said, right? These, uh, these cool awards, unique. I think we need more of that too, right? Exactly. Yeah. Be more of that. Now, and diamonds has got to go back to fighting off for one diamond. One ring, right? Yes. One I ring. Know. What's this what's this two ring business? It's good that they do a lightweight grant and a heavyweight grant. One diamond. Make them fight for one diamond, right? Yeah, right. that's the way it should be. Yeah. That's the way that's what we were used to before. Um, yes, sir. Thanks for joining us, everybody out there. All right, so um we'll talk some more. Let's interview these guys. Let let me yeah interview these guys um 
Let me see if I see Zion. I see Jim and Tomas there, and then I'll get uh okay. There's Zane. All right, I'm gonna bring them in one by one, and then I'm just gonna <coughs> exit. Okay, so let's bring on Jim first, and I'll say power to him. Power, baby. Woo. What's up, coach? Yes, sir. What's going on? I like your shirt today. Awesome, yes, awesome. sir. Awesome, nineteen. Yes, what sir. Yes, sir. Your nickname that... and your your alter ego should be Guile from Street <laughs> Fighter Two. Hey, he actually has a nickname. We call him um, Jim Iron. Getting kind of frozen like, here with you guys. Like the Vikings, you know. Have you? I don't know if you watch the Vikings. Here, um, kind of froze. Can you? Who screen? Hopefully Our screen. You guys are still going on with the show. Okay. Yeah. Can you see us? Can you see us now? Yep. How about now, Alex? Okay, yeah, Alex looks like he's free. Let's see if he comes back. All right, hopefully that doesn't happen again. Let's bring on uh, Zane, right? And uh, hey, so congratulations on a great comeback, Jim. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Ready for some deeper, ready for some deeper waters now. So I'm excited. Yeah, about man, that was awesome. What's up, Zane? The power hey, what's up, of guys? How are you? Ooh, power congratulations. Power. Yes, sir. All right, let's bring on Digman again. I think he's coming back on. Hopefully it doesn't uh, uh hey Alex. What's up, we Alex? Had technical difficulties. But uh, we're back now. Okay, you're back. You're back. You're back. Okay, now I can't see Zane in the screen. I could see him. Zane, you can hear us and everything. Good? Yeah, 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 yeah. And and you? Yeah, I'm gonna bring you down. I'm gonna bring you because we have four people on the line today. So oh, maybe, awesome. maybe, yeah, perfect. It may be uh, giving us some technical difficulties, but let's see. I'm gonna go down and I'm gonna bring on. Um, I'm gonna bring in Tomas. All right, and then you can go on with the questions. Okay. All right. I'm I, actually Zayn. I'm gonna bring you down and back up. Okay. Okay. Because right? yeah. I can't. I could see you there, but I don't think people could see you on the show. Let's bring. Let's bring up. Uh, bring you down, and I'm gonna bring Tomas up. And then, all right. Here we go. Tomas, there you go. Perfect. What's up, Tomas? What's going on, guys? Zain, if you're watching, turn, take, get off, log off, and come back on so I could see you again. All right, so what's going on, guys? Everything good? Amazing, what's up? man. Everything I can't great, go complain. Man. Awesome, awesome, man. Well, congratulations on winning the tournament. Uh, I'm really proud of you guys. Uh, I know Alex has great questions for you guys uh, right yeah. now. And um, we're going to get – we're I'm going to exit, but I'll still be able to listen. I'm going to try to get Zane back on. And, uh, Alex, you ready? It's all yours. Yeah, I'm ready. I'm going to go back and forth with questions with you guys. I'm going to yeah. go to Jim first. Okay. So, Jim, this is your first big tournament back from injury. And, I mean, knee injuries are never great, but ACL injuries – I've never had it. I'm going to knock on wood. But I hear it's about as bad as it can get. But that's not the only injury you've had. I think I saw a video one time where you were fighting and your Achilles popped in the middle of the fight. Is that right? That is correct. Yeah, in 2009 or 2010, um, I was fighting at a regional in Georgia. And we bowed in and I started bouncing and it just popped. There's a, there's a, I heard it. Of, yeah, there's a video of it. It's pretty gnarly. So... Um, but I was younger then. I recovered a lot faster. Um, so uh, it, that injury wasn't as major as my ACL. I don't even feel my Achilles now. I had a great surgeon for my Achilles, so I don't even I don't even think about it. I just make sure it's taken care of and warmed up properly. Achilles Achilles injuries are freak, man. They're just they're just freak accidents. There's, you know, right. if they're gonna happen. They're gonna happen. So. So tell me about how did you feel fighting? I mean, this is your obviously this wasn't your first time fighting again. This is one of your first competitions since the injury. Tell me how you felt. Yeah, it's, it was actually my third um, comp, our third time back in the ring. I, did, I actually went to Pan Ams. It was my um, first time back. Okay. Uh, I went to, yeah, I went to Pan Ams and fought 30 and up. Um, and I actually um, won that division that day and ended up losing to a beta in Grands. Um, so, that, it, you know, it felt, I felt pretty good. My time was still off and I still had some more weight to lose. Um, and so, I, um, so I was training really hard, um, after Pan Am's out of the gate, probably should have rested a little bit, but, um, was in the gym in December and I actually popped my other knee. Um, so, uh, but it seems to be doing fine now cause I had some really good prehab on it. I don't, it's nothing serious. So I, I had to sit out for, um, AKAs, 
which was heartbreaking because everybody did so good. And it was our first, you know, major event, but um, everybody um, really brought it. So AKs was amazing. I'll never forget that tournament. Um, well, but I, kept, I will never yeah. forget it either because you yeah. had a small yeah. bit of participation in the tournament. And yeah, you know exactly, you know exactly yeah, where I'm but, going with this too. Yeah. And that I would have done the same thing. If everybody Absolutely. didn't see it, I'll tell you, because it was, the, it was my, my favorite part of the whole tournament. Right? It was between was your, your homeboy, Ryan George, is fighting, and there was late shots going back and forth. Jim Haymor comes from like three, four rows back, charges through the ring, and takes everybody with him and just throws everybody the opposite corner of the ring. Coolest part of the whole damn tournament. <laughs> well, um, yeah, my boy Ryan George was fighting Yaku Khalifa, and um, you know they started throwing, and I, you know I just reacted just like anybody would. I just was trying to push, um, push you know uh, the other fighter away, but it got escalated pretty quickly. But I, I, that didn't really mean anything about. I wasn't trying to swing on anybody, and I went and talked to um, Coach McCoy, I, Coach Mike, and the K Talk Alliance crew after, and they, everybody was cool, so it wasn't a big deal. You bench pressed everybody out of the ring. It was awesome. Well, you know, my, yeah, so it's yeah, it's all good. Um, but yeah, the knee's doing fine. So I came to came into this event strong. I have an incredible training camp with Tomas and Zayim, Devin Hopper, you know, the whole crew, Zach Winder. Um, and we uh we get in it, we get after it, and Josh puts us through killer workout. So I was feeling really good into um into the event. And um I had, it was the first time I'd had that many fights, had seven fights, so great event. That's good. Yeah, seven fights in a whole weekend. All right, Tomas, I'm going to jump to you. So you've been yes, around sir. for a while now, so since about yes. the early 2000s, right? Yes, sir. Um, I came to the U.S. right out of the 2000s, and I started um, – I was doing martial arts back in uh, Venezuela. That's where I'm from. And um, as soon as I came here, then I started working with Josh. That just happens to fall that way. Yeah, he's got a, a good blue – on on the sport right now so okay so you've been around since then how old are you right now 32 32 okay so you came in young then okay that was, yes sir. that's cool all right so, so you've been around since the early 2000s a lot of the guys in the sport that who have been around since uh that amount of time like we have you know we remember going into tournaments in the early 2000s and you might walk in there and you see Jason Borelli at that time. And right. you're like, Oh, damn. Jody right. Dan. And you see Ray. And we were just talking about this earlier. There might've been five, six guys who really st had stood a chance to win the whole tournament. And there was a huge gap between the next guy up, but it's not like that anymore. Cause it, there's, there's a ton of, 30 guys deep that really have a legit chance to win the whole tournament. And if they do win the whole tournament, the very next tournament they go to, they could lose first round. I just feel like it's that deep. That's what I feel. What, what, what do you think, Tomas? What, what I think it is that nowadays there's so much information out there, not only with the karate, but with the nutrition, with the working out, putting in the work. <clears throat> and it's a lot of that promoting excellence and i think that that shows in the athletes now not only in sport karate but at different sports yeah that's a good point and it, and i think the longevity that fighters are having now is so much longer than what we did back then speaking of longevity zayn i'm gonna go to you zayn you hear me yeah yeah you yeah so you won the gold watch yeah I don't even know if you know how important that is. Well, Do you really understand how important the gold watch is? Well, for, for example, I remember that it's like when, when I just started like 2006, 2007, that I, I, I was a white belt. I used to get into YouTube and watching videos. And one of the, my favorite tournaments, and I thought that it was a leaf, it was bluegrass. So... And I was watching their fighting Jason, fighting Jaddy, fighting Raymond. And I remember that that it, it was, I was only a white belt and I was watching all those videos. And I was thinking that bluegrass, it was not only a tournament, it, it, not, it was a league. So 
I can imagine wow. the, the how important it, it is that, well, that 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 watch. You were a white belt in 2006. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. My team won, and my team won that tournament in 2006. I know, I know, Zayn. You were watching the tape of me. Yeah, I know yeah, yeah. that's I what you wanted to do. As well. yeah, I, I could tell. Yeah, no, yeah, I'm just playing, man. That's not what it's like. But here's what I do remember, Zion. I got one more for you. So you, I remember you coming out consistently in 2015. Well, yeah, I got I on got, WKF. On WKF, that is. Yes. Okay, and you are a dramatically, is my opinion, dramatically different fighter now Thank than you. when you were then. Thank you. And I really appreciate it. If it's just, it's just my observation. I this is what I feel like. The, the biggest you. difference between now and 2015 when you really came out on WKF is just your confidence level and just your, your comfort level with where you are with the fight. You don't look like you're frazzled at all. You don't look like there's anything that's going to shake you. I yeah. remember Hayabusa was fighting WKF. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and you fought Jeremy Francoeur, and you guys tied. And. Yeah. And I remember feeling like Jeremy left some stuff out there. He could have scored. And I remember feeling like, because I didn't know you then. Yeah. All right. Yeah, and yeah. you guys both, you guys both looked a little hesitant with each other. And I remember feeling like something's going to happen with these guys. But I really, as I watched that fight, I'm like, I don't even know who these guys are. I could, I couldn't really tell. And then if anybody else remembers, Roman went and put us up on a lead by 11, only to have Jim come and win in the anchor match by 12. Thanks a lot, Jim. Thanks, thanks. That really, really helps us a lot. Yeah. That was a fun night. Yeah, you had fun. That's crazy. You had yeah. fun. <laughs> and I'm, st I, I'm still remember that fight. I'm still remember that that moment. And, and almost all the time that, I'm, that I see to Jim, I, I'm telling him, like, man, do you remember all the time it was kicking to the face, kicking to the face? So it, was, it wasn't only kicking to the body. No, all the time it was kicking to the face. So every two points, it was to yeah, the yeah. face. So it was right. Insane. Well, let's talk a little bit more about that because that's actually a great segue as to what I wanted to get into next. So I watched some of these fights. And speaking of kicks to the face, those ones that you talked about, Zane, those ones got called. That's not where I'm going, though. <laughs> I saw a whole bunch of Jim Kmore kicks that yeah. did not get called. And it was very – because I watched – I watched them again, and I'm like, wait a second. That, that can't be right. Let me watch it again. And just kicks, blap, kicks, wow. There's no, there's no acknowledgement. No stop call at all. Just like nothing happened. Well, what do you guys feel? That's my observation watching it online. Jim, talk to me. Well, um, first of all, you know, the event was great. Um, and nothing is ever going to be um, perfect. But, um, you know, you know, it is what it is. It is what it is. You know, I guess I have to make it more clear. We just have to do a better job of making it more clear. It needs to be so clear that there's, um, you know, not even a chance of it getting called the wrong way. Um, so that's what we just got to go back to the drawing board and work on. I'm not going to say, you know, anybody, um, you know, was, was making bad calls because there's obviously some question. So, um, but I will say Saturday afternoon at the tournament, um, some high level NASCA judges were there and things um, seemed to tip a different way. That's all I'll say. That's good. That's good. Yeah. So, Tomas, what, what what were your feelings about the judging? And here's what here's why I'll present it. I'll present it this way, because Alex and I were talking about this earlier, and it's it's interesting, Jim. You just mentioned it. Sometimes when you get these high level NASCA officials, I I feel the reason why they are well, we have more confidence in them is because they see us on a regular level, not that they're ready to give us points because they know who we are. It's because being that will of fighting all the time. So, but sometimes when you go to an event that's maybe not at that high level because you don't get judges at that high level all the time, it doesn't tip that way. Tomas, what are your feelings about that? Um, I think every time they go to, 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 a, to a tournament, um, you got to see what what they're calling, what how things are tipping each way and definitely make it clear. Like Jim said, like there is no reason why we should give them a clash, an easy call. Like, it, we got to be able to make 
a definite hit. Um, recall back those hands. Don't leave anything hanging out there and to make those calls happen. Absolutely. You guys, yeah. you guys make yeah. me say this. I'm going to say this. I'm going to say it. You guys are saying the right – you guys are saying the politically correct thing. I'm going to say the right thing right now. When we as fighters – I'll just say we for a moment, all right? When we bust our tail and we do, our, and we do, do a great job to have somebody go, ah, I didn't see it. It's got to drive you nuts. Your whole point, your job – is to see because that's yeah. and I, I'll be honest with you that's the one call I hate the most is I didn't I didn't see because their whole job is to see so if you can't see and you're in the ring then you have been in you're outside the ring so if you can't do that why are you in the ring let's get you out and get somebody else in that's just me yeah. Yeah. Zion you know uh, well, you well uh, I remember that it was I was in Mexico and and these kind of things it used to happen. Where uh, when you when the tournament finished and you got home or with your friends, all the time it was the same excuse because the judges, because the judges, because the calls. But here right now you have to understand that if some if there's not a call or the judge says like I couldn't see, okay, so you got to go harder, you have to hit stronger, you have to go faster. And make them make them say, "It's your call. It's your call." And 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 it's not and it's not only after that tournament. If not, it is when the fight is there. So in that moment, maybe they couldn't see uh, a body punch, a side kick, a hook kick, whatever. So, okay, the next point, I have to go harder. I have to go faster because I need that point. So I can change everything, but. Everything is up to us. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, you know yeah. what you're saying. All right, yeah, I got so a couple other questions. Well, 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 go ahead, Jim. Go ahead. Just to piggyback off of that. So, you know, because it's, it's an important topic because there, there is a, a major truth to what you're saying, Alex, is with all the investment that goes into this, um, we just, not just black belts, not just NASCAR competitors, but everybody who's having this experience because it's a, it's a big deal for your underbelt students too. It's important to have a high standard. It varies because it's, it's, you know, customer experience and that's what keeps them coming back, you know? Um, and so what has to happen is we have to put our ego aside when we're talking about regional, traditional families. So these regional tournaments all have guys who are around them who bring their schools to them. And that is awesome. That is the lifeblood of karate. That's how I was raised. But yeah. what has to happen is these guys, these promoters have to get together and they have to do something like what they're doing in Georgia right now, which is um, the ProMac division, which is, you know, a step under NASCA, but it is an incredible sanctioning body that helps keep things in line. And it actually takes a lot off of the promoter's plate to have some of these standards in place. Um, and I think when everybody gets on the same page and like we're at these regionals and we're not running around for judges, the judges are there. They're certified by ProMac. They're certified by NASCA whatever have you, you know, a good sanctioning body, then we're not going to run into this as much. And, you know, the, those presidents or whoever's in charge, just make sure that the NASCA, I mean, the, the men's open weight and the women's open weight and all the, you know, divisions like that are judged by highly, you know, qualified fighters. I mean, or, you know, people with a resume themselves like Saturday um, we had Chuck Reynolds in our corner and we had Jason Warren in our corner at uh, one time, uh, Terry Kramer was the head. So on Saturday, you know, we had we had great judges, Danny Potts. Yeah, um, so, like, you know, Danny that, Potts. Yeah, I haven't seen that guy around in a long Dude. time. So yeah, yeah, he was there. The Wheelers crew was there. They always bring out a great, uh, a great crew. Um, so, but yeah, so that's kind of that's kind of my take on it. Is um, we just got to get on the same page for the sake of our students, for the sake of our underbelts, for the sake of the the future of the sport. And these people have to be trained on you know how the game is evolving and what to really look for and how to have confidence in their calls. That's a really good point. I, I, I like where you're going with that. Um, I got a question, and I'll start with Tomas. So did, we're about close to the first quarter of the year. That's done. Um, so my questions are, who do you think is like, all right, this guy's been the fighter of the year so far? 
So far, you know, I got to give it to my teammate. I got to give it to Cam. Um, I think that he has a lot of fire coming up into this year. Um, and it's 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 going to be a memorable year for, for him uh, and for all of us, you know, going to be into this team. So I think he's going to do an amazing job this year. Um, and on that girl side, I got to give it to my girl, Kitana. I think she's going to just bring some fire um, in – and she has shown it so far, and I think there's there's going to be some more out there that you guys are going to be really, really surprised with. Katana really has taken a step up. So Katana started when Katana won the ring. That was the diamond ring. That was basically like, okay, Katana starts now, right? Okay, I'm here. And everybody, myself included, kind of expected, all right, Katana's going to take that next step, but it didn't happen. And it didn't start to happen big time like that. And I, and I think she might have thought, all right, it's, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take that next step now. Um, so it didn't happen right away. But I think now it is. Now she's starting to really step up and improve her game big. It probably has a lot to do with the dojo crew that she's surrounded around. So tell me a little bit more about that, like Zain. So tell me, on a giving training night, what does a dojo crew crew training night what does that look like like who's all there man it is real cool because it is a hard training because everybody is like i want to to do the best of me every training every night but you know the vibes and and the feeling with everybody is not like like bad it's you bad. know it you can you can feel the joy you can feel like because we are not only friends, we can you can feel that we are not only friends or we are not only a team. Even though you can feel that feeling that we are family. So it and it is like like you know what I'm saying. So I, I feel really really good when I'm training with all of them because it is hard, but at the same time you can feel good. So it is not like oh my god, I can uh I don't feel good, I don't feel that I don't belong here if, you know, everybody makes you right. feel that you are part of there. So that's what I love training with all of them. Okay, what about this one? Because this one's always, this has just been something for me. It's always been something wherever I've trained up until and including now. There's always been a little bit of trash talk during training nights. Who is the, tra who is the trash talker when you guys are training or trash talkers? Who, who Ready, talks let's, trash? Let's all say it together on three. Ready? One, two, three. Devin. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he yeah. does talk a lot of smack. Yeah, but uh, but he's the man right now, though. Yeah. So, he, I mean, we are, you know, he's part, he's the big guy on campus, um, you know, uh, right now. And he is um, he, getting to train with him and Zayn, the caliber. So, just to answer your earlier question, what a training night might look like. Yeah. For us, a regular night. So I'll tell you how it looks. So first, we have Zayn, all right? Thanks. Devin, Zach, Katana, myself, Tomas, and Justin Ortiz. Justin Ortiz. My yeah. goodness. Yeah. So, and then... Um, oh, yeah. Just sprinkle him in there. Yeah. <laughs> and, so, and then also, um, there's been some other very prolific fighters who... Um, are Atlanta based or come they'll just to visit from time to time? Uh, yeah, they're there more than you know time to time, uh, and they're also um, they let's just say they might have a couple of diamond rings between them as well, and so they um, help us get work in too, and it, they're very welcomed. Um, so yeah, on any given night there is let's see two one uh, there's five diamond rings on our mat at any given time training. So um, that's a heck yeah, yeah. Work. And then and then we have Josh who is constantly, you know, he is a student of the game. And not only is he important to us on so many levels, but man, he coaches us. He coaches us. And uh, Coach G would be very proud of the way he trains and pushes us. And it's good to learn karate from Josh because you know, I don't want people I want people to remember, you know, Josh Josh's freaking good. You know. Josh is Josh is really good. Josh is super smart too. Yeah. I remember the first time I met Josh, I didn't know who the heck Josh was. It was the Battle of Atlanta in 2003, and we were up against, at the time, oh, it was Team Pro Rank. 
All right. And Josh was on pro rank with Kodak. Yeah. And I saw Josh was out kicking this other guy at the round four. And I'm like, I want that guy. Yeah. And, <laughs> and that's when Josh and I became friends. And Josh is, but he's so smart. And mm -hmm. you're exactly right. So I just feel like the culture has really started to grow. And I've just, I, this is an outsider. I feel like Josh has a thumbprint on sport martial arts quite a bit. And everybody's really getting a chance to kind of learn and grow from that. Yeah, it's incredible uh, for sure. And um, he takes care of us. Oh, and I, I just, just to make sure I, we, I mentioned Zach. I can't remember if I said Zach. We, we have Zach there too. You did. So I can't. Yeah. Okay, good. I, I want to make sure. I who know. throws this one? Who, this is, is what I want to know. Speaking of training nights, who throws the craziest stuff in training? You got to say, why the heck did you even try that? How did you, or how did you even land that? Who throws those kind of things? Tomas. <laughs> I don't know, man. Katana, Katana throws some stuff. She really does. And she, I've seen, she's hit a couple of us with some, some straight jump back kicks and she'll drop that ax on you. Um, she's got some great traditional karate. The other night she hit me with a retreating rear leg sidekick, perfect chamber. Um, this, this chick's no joke. And, no, no, no. No, yeah. see, those are the textbook things. Oh, I, what I, I'm talking. Yeah, yeah, you know what yeah. I'm talking about. Like that. Why did you even try that? Who tries a move like that? Oh, uh, well, we all don't want to get hurt, so we, we try to take our we try to stay our nose to the grind zone. zone. Devin threw some cartwheels last well, week. Well, <laughs> yeah, true. Yeah. Zach, and, Zach and I used to train every so often together when he was in the Chicago area. Zach. Zach, you know you got me, man. Those ridiculous freaking spins, man. Why the heck did you have to get me with that, man? And he's not even trying them on you. Messed up. Oh, Zach. He, he he has tried it. He has tried it, definitely for sure. Yeah. He, I saw one time I came in with a round. Okay, he spun around. I don't know, five twenty-seven times, whatever it was, and throw his out there. I'm so glad that I had my hands up. For else, it would have been a bad night. Yes. He, he is in incredibly gifted athletically, um, and so he has some of the fastest limb speed out of a striker and a kicker um, that I've seen um, ever. I mean, the limb speed on this kit is ridiculous. So he um, he goes off for sure. That's true. Okay, so Mike was just commenting. He said, TDE, awesome 19. So right now, I think it's today. I think today is Gerald's birthday, right? Yeah, yes, sir. Am I right? Yes, sir. What's and so Gerald's really had an impact on sport karate quite a bit. And I was just kind of sharing, you know, off air um with Alex a little bit about um just even my wife. My wife's not in the sport. And he and my wife, they've had interactions before. However, he did think she was Stephanie Flowers at first. So that's why they started talking. Um but then he's just such a nice guy. But what's a Gerald Dawson story that you guys really have really – this really just stuck in your mind? What about you, Zion? Well, the truth is that I never had, like, a lot of time to talk with him. But I used to love how every time that I used to see the videos when I was young, man – his fight. Yeah. I love his fights. And 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 when when I just got here and I just started to watch him uh in person, it was insane. It's, and still I remember every time I I either can't believe he he used to be fast, real fast. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I what about what about you, Tomas? Man, um, we had a training session. This is towards the beginning of TDE, um, and they came down. Coach G and Cam came down, and we had a training session. I cannot tell you how fast that back fist was until he retrieved it. And I was just like, man, what in the world was that? And how that training session turned into a teaching moment for all of us that were there. Um, not only on the sports side of it and the training side of it, but the mind game. What is how you prepare your mind to that combat? How you prepare your mind 
to get on that plane and go across America to put the beating on somebody, you know? And, and it's and it's that uh, what takes a fighter from being a super athlete, super kick, super punches, amazing blitz into that right. superstar. That's huge. What about you? What What about you, Jim? Well, I have two. First one, real quick one is when they first um, when they first came on the team and we had them down to have their official uh, induction and um, get uniforms and for Coach G to you know talk to all of us. Um, we got to go to cryotherapy together, yeah. and so um, and get frozen right. together. And so watching Coach G um, in that cryo uh, chamber just um, going off because it was so cold. Um, you know, he, he was not a fan at first. No, nope. no, but he, you know, he loved it after. So, um, you know, it was cool to be around because I had only known him from that point. I talked to him several times. You know, Josh and um, Gerald and Cam had been close um, long before TDE as yeah. their business owners, and they, they'd always re- would talk about that. And I was traveling with Josh, and so we always would we would have breakfast together a good bit. So we were pretty close, um, you know. Uh, and so, um, but my one of my you know, the memory that sticks out and I'll never forget is um, his last tournament. Um, I got the team fight with him in the executive challenge. So I was with him for the last ride and I'll never forget that. That's a huge wow. um, milestone for me in, um, in my cry career is that I even got to fight with Austin Dawson himself on the team. Not only because I got to be coached against him when I would fight Cam, I got to, um, uh, cause me and Cam would fight a lot and um, I got to have him as a teammate and as a coach. So, um, it's it's an honor, and then we were done. We won. We won the event. Mike Simmons and I, and Coach G, we won, and um, we they um, only gave out one medal, and so um, Coach G uh, gave it to me. He said, hey, "This one's for you," because it was my official uh, first time back uh, debut debut with the team since the injury. So, man, what huge. a guy! Yeah, absolutely. So, and I still have that medal. And honestly, I don't pick up trophies a lot from tournaments. You know, same things like that. But that one I, I kept. And I said, you know what? This is the first time back, and, and I'm going to keep this one. And I'm so glad I kept it. You know, as a, I, at first I kept it as a milestone for me, but now it means something a whole lot more to have that medal. And there's a picture of it with me on Facebook, and it's wow. me, Mike, and Coach Gerald in the background, and I'm biting the medal. And that's a, that's a really special picture to me. Yeah, you should frame that picture if you haven't yeah. already. That's a big deal. I got one for you. I don't know if you guys knew about this one. So – 2005 Battle of Atlanta was kind of a disaster of a tournament that was redeemed by the final um, match of the tournament. This is what they did, right? It was super strange. Jotty Tension ended up winning the, the overall point grand championship. But what they decided to do, is they decided they were going to do a 16-man super fight challenge. So Larry Carnahan gets on the microphone and says, anybody who wants to compete for the 16-man Super Fight Challenge for a chance to win $2,500, come over here. We all look and we're like, what? What? What do you? Okay. So we go. And it's all a bunch of young kids. I was, I was young. All a bunch of young kids and Gerald. And I'm thinking, no. And they, they handpicked the first-round matchups. And Gerald was in it. And I'm thinking like, one of these, the other, but, but Tomas, you're absolutely right. He's so smart. I've been, I've never been coached by him. I've never fought him. I've been coached against him. I've been coached against him. Uh, because I fought and I lost on a buzzer beater capitals. And I, I been coached against him when I fought Jarrell. I don't know if you guys remember Jarrell. All right. So his, his other son, Jarrell Dawson. So Jarrell, super talented too. So, and I remember I hear what other judges say sometimes, and he's he is super smart, and he gets it. So that was just a super cool moment for me. And I remember thinking, like, how is this guy going to? And he was just he's killing it. Yeah, big thing. Huge man. So I know. Um, so. We talked about, hey, who are the best fighters of the year so far? Um, what do you guys think as far as predictions so far? Well, actually, you know what? How about this? Forget that. What's next on the agenda for the Power TDE team? What are you, well, what's, what's next with, with that? 
Well, for sure. But before we do that, I want to talk about, um, you know, the tournament in itself as an event. Um, you know, Marty, you've Yeah, go for it. Yeah, yeah we, we didn't get into that enough. Tournament of champions, yeah. Um, so, man, it, you know, from start to finish, it was it was run very well. Um, and I, I, like I said, I had a lot of fights. I had eight fights in the weekend, um, and, you know, and – it's rare to get that, you know, it's awesome. If you, if you get that at a regional, that's incredible. So um, they took care of us. Um, the hotel was great. This um, event has the potential within the next couple of years to be a real um, national event. Uh, it really does. Um, it has prestige in it already. You know, there's, there's good tournament. There's good champions who've come out of that tournament. Um, Kevin Walker's won that tournament. Um, now Zayim, Landon Reynolds has won that tournament. Um, I, I won it one time. Um, so, you know, it's, it's a great tournament. Um, it's got a lot of history. Um, he uh, gives away great prize money for a regional. You know, we all walked out of there with some money. Um, you know, 300 for men's teams, um, 300 for uh, men's overall, 100 for open weight, plus awesome trophies. Um, so, yeah, we had, a, we had a great time. And the food was awesome. I, I think I already said that, but the food, there was so much food around there. You know, sometimes you go to these events and you get out late Friday night, there's no food around. And you know you want to go out and hang out with your buddies, but there was so much. There was so much to eat. It was it was great. Really? Yeah. Okay. Sure. So what was the food like? Oh, it was awesome. Like, well, yeah. Asain, he's he's yeah, an eater. Asain. Yeah. So here, this is what's crazy. We couldn't figure out why the food was so good and why there was so much of it. So we Googled it, and Bowling Green has more restaurants per capita than anywhere in the United States. That's Get more out. At first, no, and they all stay open till like. They should put that on the flyer. Hour. <laughs> yeah till one o'clock so um and the and the tournament hotel was nice too and i'm hoping that soon the because it's got a venue center i'm hoping that the tournament's uh hotel and the venue will be the same if that happens man that, that tournament's gonna be great okay well let me ask you this i was gonna ask about you know the tournament and if it grows will it move so if anybody remembers being at the bluegrass nationals that was in louisville and it was at the galt house with And being on Fourth Street Live. I kind of went frozen with you guys. Yeah, I don't know if you hear yeah, me. I didn't, I didn't catch some of that. I hope you're talking. Yeah. Oh, uh, he's gone. Oh, oh he's gone. Yes, he's just gone. the three of us. Now we're anyway, yeah, hey, power. what's up? Woo, oh, power, baby. Yeah. So we're just talking about the turn. Yeah, we were just yeah, talking about the I can tournament. see you, now. Coach. How awesome. What's up? Hey, I'm enjoying the show, just uh, watching, and it's awesome. Great, great, uh, great show so far. Oh, he's back. So I'm going to come down and bring him back on, okay? Okay. Power, baby. Power. I'm back. Back. Okay. So, Jim, I was asking you. Yeah. Well, I don't, Tomas, Zain, I don't, do you guys remember, were you guys ever at the Bluegrass Nationals at the Galt House? Were you guys ever there? I, I did not get a kid. chance, sir. No. I was there as a kid. My dad uh, and his crew went up there one time, and I, was, I went there as a kid. Yeah. So do you, do you ever see this thing getting, Jim, do you ever see this thing getting big enough to go there? I do. I do. I, I, you know, even if it doesn't go there, there's a venue next to, um, this hotel that will, will definitely fit all of us. And it's, it's a cool area. Um, and it's kind of in the middle of the country there, you know, in Kentucky where there's a lot of good regions that can pull off of from it from a lot of different directions. So it's, you know, it's definitely on its way up and he's already taken steps to ensure that by having national judges there. Um, it, it, you know, Uvent he has Uventex. They helped out a lot having Uventex, the Uventex crew is there and they were hustling I'm getting stuff done. Um, and listen, we were done. He did all the divisions on Friday night uh, um, and that he could and that he'd get away with. And Saturday we had like a traditional tournament. We were done by one thirty, And it was a pretty big tournament. And the, some of the kids didn't get done until um, – I mean, we were done. There was still some other stuff going. But we were done by one thirty, And they ran they ran the whole thing hey. in the core of the tournament. So um, it was awesome. Yeah. Okay, so what's next on the agenda for the Power TDE team? Or what are you most excited about for the year? Um, I think the next one will be AmeriKick, right? Yeah, AmeriKick. We're going to AmeriKick. Um, I think a few of us are going up to Quebec um, right. before then, too, as well. So um, regionally, we're, we're somewhere almost every weekend. 
um, part of the awesome deal that comes with, um, you know, being on TV and working for Josh and working for Tomas and their other partners, Kyle and Tim, um, is that, you know, when we recruit these fighters to come in and work um, for, our, you know, our organization, um, you, get, you get to compete. And we have so much good quality staff that can cover. These guys can go and compete almost every weekend and our, our business not miss a blip because we have such good systems and process thanks to Josh and his mind and the way it works. And, and to, you know, Tomas is one of the vice presidents of our, of our organization and he does a lot too. So we have some brilliant minds who um, are not only, you know, teaching good karate um, and fostering, uh, you know, young ones, um, but uh, we've got a, a, a something real magical happening that allows us to, you know, you know be point fighters, karate teachers, and, and almost live like professional sea camp. And it, it's really something else. That's an important thing. Okay, so I think, yes, yeah, so you guys got a few of them coming up. So I have Amerikick is the next one, if not Quebec. What's your favorite tournament of the year? Of every year, you're like, this tournament. The battle. Yeah. Battle. 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 Yeah. For sure. It's it's so prestigious. I mean, Diamonds is very prestigious, and I love Diamonds. I love going to Pan Ams, too. Um, that's always a lot of fun. But when it comes to, like, excitement in the air where you feel like you're at the Super Bowl, I mean, that, that men's open weight, the battle, is so prestigious now. It's it's getting on up there, you know. And and uh, it's definitely the battle from and, and that is another truth entertainment tournament that Promac the, that same circuit that's down here that's so strong the same people who own the battle own this Promac circuit so like goes down and, and um, the battle is so well Toby Ruth that year that we um, the WK have won the battle a couple of years ago when we fought JP um, you know oh, I remember that. yeah. That. That a freaking up, and I was there for that. Jim, you were on fire. Yeah, it was good, and you know I got to say, you know, have my last dance with Zolt Marotti. Had a bunch of fights with him, and um, you know he still, you know he still beat me on points. We ended up, you know, obviously winning, but um, that was the best I'd ever fought him. You know, I fought him the smartest, and you know I'm, uh, you know, fighting Zolt is getting to say you fought Zolt is is cool. Well, that's not the first time you fought Zolt. I remember the first. I remember. I don't know if it was the first. I remember one of the first times you fought Zolt no, at the I fought U.S. Him. Open. I fought him three or four times. So yeah, the time at the U.S. Open. Yeah, that, my goodness. That fight. I, that fight. That's the reason that um, Alex picked me up was that day. It was the U.S. Open. So yeah, that was a good. Yeah, day. he and I actually talked about that. Yeah, and I yeah. think that's one of the things that is really uh, giving me a lot of respect for you, Jim is you're a you're a big guy i feel like if you were to like if you go into the gym when you go to lift you're probably one of the biggest guys in the gym when you go lift and you spin kick fools in the head and you're slide kicking across the room and i know you got to be deadlifting 500 plus pounds easy uh, yeah, I seem to yeah. be I seem to be built for being able to you know move strong weight. But I, I've also always been a little heavier than I should be because I love lifting weights so much. It's one of the reasons why I tore my ACLs because I was too fat to be point fighting because um, I let myself get too big. So I'll never do that again. And I, I, I've fluctuated a couple times when I fight my best when I was fighting Zolt USO 115, and that's and that's what I need to be, and that's what I am now, and that's what I'll stay. So. Um, but yeah, strength is you know something I've you know I've used to my advantage. I've managed to use it to my advantage, and it comes because I'm I've I'm trained in a very good system of traditional karate, and that's where my funky chamber comes from. Is is that so? It, the the two paired well together, and then once Josh got a hold of me, and he's still getting a hold of me and fixing my hands, you know it's, it makes for a good package. So I'm very Josh, fortunate. And Josh is a great kicker too. Josh, yeah. I, I feel confident, and I've never really had a lot of conversation with Josh about this part, but I know Josh I, I, that if someone was a good kicker and wanted to become a great kicker and Josh got a hold of him, he can make that happen. Yeah, Josh yeah. is a great kicker. And that's why, yes, yeah, and yeah, we have a lot of great kickers. Tomas is an incredible kicker, and Tomas is uh, one of Mr. Josh's black belts, and Tomas can kick kick. Zayn, uh, you agree, you know? Yeah, so um, yeah, for sure. All right, well, here's one last question I want to ask for you guys. Because sometimes the sport gets away from us. 
we get we get caught up in the next tournament. Oh man, I won this. I got to get the next one. And sometimes as the years go by, you realize I never fought this guy. I've never fought this guy. It was so strange. I was telling people that it was in a team fight 2 years ago. One and only time I fought Jack Feldman. And when I told that to somebody and they said, wait a minute, you've only fought Jack Feldman one time in a team fight? I said, yeah. The times it just didn't match up. Our teams didn't match up against each other. I was at a tournament. He wasn't. He was at a tournament. I wasn't. It, just, it was just he's been at it so long. I've been at it so long. We just never paired up. It was like that. Who's a guy? You're like, you know what? I would love to fight this guy or I wish I would have fought that guy. What about you, Tomas? Uh, man, I guess my nemesis back in the day was Alex Lane, and uh, I got a chance to to fight him, but never didn't get a chance to beat him. So uh, I think this is just one of those things, you know, that just sticks on me. Um, but to the new fighter that I would love to fight, man, I go back. I would love to fight Cam, that nasty strong leg. You forget about nasty strong leg. I <laughs> feel... Like this guy throws bricks up in the air and back fists him and breaks him in the air. That's how he trains his back fist. He does for sure. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> what about you, Zayn? Who's the guy you're like, I wish I would have fought well, the guy you want to fight? Well, I'm still thinking about like one of my favorites in all the history uh, in the sport of karate is Jack. So yeah. I grew up like five with him. I grew up like five. And all the one go be sold. Yeah. Those and that's over now. That's doesn't that just stick yeah. with you like ah, I can never yeah. get it now. Yeah, exactly. That's yeah, right. because he he's he, uh his his leg is strong and he's fast, but I really good like clash his leg against the mine and that kind of things, you know? Right, so, right. And Jack What about you, Jim? Um, well, I am very fortunate that I have the resume that I have. I've gotten to fight pretty much almost everybody. I'm very fortunate that I got to fight pretty much all the European, all, all the Europeans, um, multiple times. Um, and so I'm glad that I got to do that. But, um, the one person that I modeled my leg after my style, after my personality kind of after in the ring, I looked up to him, um, why everybody. Everybody was looking up to different people as Trevor Nash. I never got to fight Trevor Nash. I knew Nash you were going to say there. that. Yeah. So I've actually made a, po a post post when I was laid up with my ACL. I listed, you can go look it up and read it, where, you know, the, of all the people I've got to fight, all the awesome people, the few I've missed, but the one, you know, I've missed a couple. Um, but I'm sure we're fought Jack, but I'm sure we'll, we'll cross paths, you know, so. But, um, it, it was Trevor, hands down, it's Trevor. And, um, you know, he's he's the man man to me. So, and I'm left leg, you know, and he's just, that was it. He really Definitely is. Trevor's Trevor. got a whole different attitude, too. If Trevor yeah. wasn't who Trevor is, you would swear he hates you. You would swear yeah. he actually wanted to kill you. Yeah. But that's and not I it. That I, I hope that I emulate the same. And I think I kind of do. Like, I, I I get after it. And but at the, you know, I shake your hand at the end, but wh while you're in the ring, you're gonna feel that you know, you're gonna feel that heat, and that's what Trevor did. And I was like, Yeah, that's that's how I want to fight. And but you know, Trevor had some incredible moments, but that time in the Irish Open when they were they were down, and it, I mean, they were down by like 10 or 11, and you're probably there. Oh, and, I know exactly what you're talking about, yeah. And they, you know, they they had gotten down, and it, it went, came down to Trevor and and, and Tomas Emery. And Trevor went off, and I was like, "This is the dude, dude." You know, he kicked he his so headgear off. Great about that, he kicked his headgear off twice. And at yeah. the time, Tomas Imre was probably one of the best in the 100%. world defending 100%. kickers. 100%. And Trevor just said, "The heck with that," and and that's exactly yeah. it. No, and the, yeah, and no the guy, the guy is a bad ass dude. The bad right? dude. And, and it's interesting you said that because he and I really only had team match against each other at the Battle in 03. And it went like it was like five to four. Okay. 
So we never really had a match, except for this kind of bout at the <laughs> Irish Open. It didn't really – I was in the gold medal round of a different one. I walk up to Trevor and say, yo, I'm about to bow out of this one. And he says, no, 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 I'm bowing out. I said, what are you talking about? He says, no, nah, I don't really want to do this. I just want the open weight. So then they wouldn't let him bow out, so we had to stage this thing. I don't in there. So I never really got a chance to fight him either. Yeah. He's, he's definitely on my, on, my, on my Mount Rushmore, so he's great. Yeah. Have you guys ever gotten a chance to fight Jason Borelli before? Oh, I have, yeah. I go no, sir. Yeah, I have. I, really I thought like, but I never did it. I he used to be one of my favorites teams. because he's an insane kicker. I think he's the greatest ever. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's not fair. I'll tell you this. I'm, I'm 5'11". I think Jason is like 5'8". I went one time. I went to go spin. I see his chamber coming up super high. I'm like, I got you. So I drop my head. And I spin, fully extend. And somehow this dude, axe kicks me in the head before yeah. my foot hits him. And I'm thinking, I'm doing the math. I'm three inches taller than you. I'm at full extension. How did you just make that possible? For sure. He, um, he, when we fought, we fought at the diamonds and teams and, you know, I knew exactly what I was getting myself into and my chamber is pretty high. And, you know, for our height difference, I, you know, I put my chamber up against his and I was like, I'll, I'm going to be able to kick over it. And he, he ax kicked me. He, you know, did his famous hacks kick right over mine and hit me in that top of the, the skull with his heel. And I really did thought I was going to, like, I had a concussion. And I was like, oh, so that's what Jason Borelli is all about. That's what people say he is. Because I didn't see it coming. And, you know, I had to be a lot more careful. And I, you know, the, 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 it's, it's not a, a myth. It's the legend. It's true. His chamber and his, his leg is, you know, he's one of the goats for, for, for sure, sure. Yeah, it ain't no joke, man. Yeah. Hey, Alex, where do you want us to go next, brother? We could go with some more power. Yeah. He's he's gone, I guess. He's he's We're he's adjusting about. something somehow. That's okay. So, hey, I had so the to battle is coming. Down. I had to bring Tomas down to get up here, so. Tomas, oh. thanks for joining us. Um, and uh, great show, guys. It was an awesome show. Great topics. And uh, it was just awesome. Alex, thanks for doing this, too. Uh, you did a great job with the questions and everything. And it was uh, very interesting. And it was very cool to watch the show from here, you know? Like, I was enjoying the show yeah. and watching. And uh, it was awesome. So thanks for that. Hey, Zayn, Jim, and Tomas, I know you're watching down there. Uh, thanks for joining the show. Congratulations. And on to the next one. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Power, yes, sir. baby. Power, yes, baby. Sir. Power. All right, guys. Well, have a good night. Hope you Thank enjoyed you. the show tomorrow. We're going to come back with Christian Rivas in the morning. And uh, it's going to be an awesome show. Power, baby. Power, baby.